So we need to prove the factor theorem, uh, that x minus c is a factor of this polynomial if and only if f of c equals 0. So ignore all that stuff for now, because it's actually very, very quick if we just accept some of this stuff. So for the, uh, we have to prove if and only if f of c equals 0. So the if part, the forward part, if f of c equals 0, then f of minus c should be a factor of f of x. So, we start off by using our remainder theorem that we can write any polynomial as uh, x minus c times q of x plus f of c. And I'll explain why that makes sense in a second, but just for now, we can write any polynomial as x minus c times the quotient basically plus the remainder. And uh, since we know, since we're given f of c equals 0, then we can say that f of x equals x minus c times q of x, and then that's just plus 0, right? So that's that. And, oh, look, x minus c is now a factor of f of x, uh, because that's what it means to be a factor. It, so f of x can be written as this times that, so that's a factor. Check. So uh, thus x minus c is a factor of f of x. It goes in with no remainder, right? I can write f of x as this times that. Just like I could write uh, 20 as 5 times 4 with no remainder, I can write uh, f of x as x minus c times q of x with no remainder. Cool. So we proved the uh, first part, the if part. Now we have to go the other way in reverse. So now uh, they're saying, okay, if we knew that x minus c is a factor, then we would know that f of c is 0. So we'll start here by knowing if f, no, you're right. So if we're given that x minus c is a factor, uh, then we can write that f of x should be x minus c times some quotient times some extra function with no remainder, right? And so then, um, uh, then we want to figure out what f of c is, right? So f of c would be c minus c, right? Because you're just plugging in c for the x times q of x, and oh, that's 0 times q of x, so that's 0, so f of c equals 0, like we planned. And so we've proven both parts, the if and only if part, and that's your little proof of the factor theorem. Now, I probably should have done this part in a separate video, but some people kind of don't like this idea here of the uh, remainder theorem. And I just try to, over here, uh, give you examples from regular old division from elementary school, right? Like if you had 22 divided by 5, like our division algorithm, you do 22 divided by 5 with a remainder of 2, right? And so therefore you can write 22 equals 5 times 4 plus 2, right? We're good with that. And clearly we would say that 5 isn't a factor of 22 because you had that remainder, right? So like it doesn't go in perfectly. Uh, same thing here. If you had 20 divided by 5, you do 20 divided by 5. Uh, is 4 with no remainder, so then you would say, oh yeah, then 5 is definitely a factor of 20 because there was no remainder. You could write 20 as 5 times 4 plus 0. And so we're writing everything as this, like this top number will be this times this plus that, right? 22 will equal 5 times 4 plus 2. You could even do it with a lovely polynomial and say that this would equal the dividend times the quotient plus the remainder. And you could check it, that this would equal this plus this plus this times this plus 2. And you wouldn't say that x plus 5 is a factor of this because it didn't go in perfectly. Um, you had that extra little remainder on the end. So remember when you're doing those long division problems in some textbooks and you got a remainder of 0 and then you're like, oh, I could have factored the top and the bottom and it would have been just fine. Uh, and I didn't have to do this long, fancy, long division way, but it works out either way. So, that was a lot of rambling. Um, not quite as much as Khan, but Khan does a very nice job of explaining everything 
if you want to look up uh, remainder theorem and factor theorem, he goes a little bit slower through it. But the, the actual just proof of the factor theorem, not so bad. Just, just that. Just the brown. There you go.